A lady told me one time, you can't go where your mind hasn't went. October 2017, my hunter and I were attacked by a bear. We left camp thinking we were going for a nice evening hunt. Finally shot her elk. I can remember telling her, this is great. We're only a mile from camp. We'll be back eating steak in, in an hour and a half. Here, you're in grizzly country and it is a bit different in that you as the hunter are here alongside of a apex predator, the grizzly bear. I was head down in an elk. He made the most perfect archery stock that you could ever do. The hunter seen the bear at full charge at about 25 yards. For such a large animal, they are so quiet. Most of the time you don't hear them coming up on you and then last second they got that, that speed, it leaves you split seconds to make a decision. He made two bounds to get to us. The bear hit me and then attacked her and then came back to me and then grabbed the elk and, and left. All he wanted was that elk. If he would have asked, we'd have gave it to him. Wyoming. It's home to some of the wildest and most pristine wilderness in the lower 48. Here, the greater Yellowstone ecosystem thrives and remains one of the few places a hunter can experience the land and wildlife as it was before the modern era. But with these wild places come real dangers. Knowledge and preparation go a long way toward reducing risks and keeping people safe. For the professional outfitter and guide, safely hunting with clients in bear country is a serious undertaking that requires a strong awareness of bears and a thorough knowledge of their behavior and biology. We're seeing bears in places where we haven't seen bears in a hundred years. In 1975, grizzly bears were put on the endangered species list and they think that there was between 125 and 150 bears in the whole ecosystem. And since then we've had a, a long, slow recovery, but now we have a lot higher densities of grizzly bears in the ecosystem and a, a much further distribution. It's really important for us to minimize conflicts and minimize human-caused bear mortality. What I think has been a great disservice to the grizzly bears is this notion that these bears are immediately dangerous and are unstoppable. There's been a lot of bears injured and killed by folks that didn't understand the behavior that bear was exhibiting. And I think there have been some folks that have been injured or killed because they didn't understand what behavior that bear was exhibiting. They're animals, they behave certain ways, and if you understand how they behave, your chance of coming out of an encounter in good shape are a lot better. One major key to de-escalating a bear encounter is understanding bear behavior. 99% of bear encounters end with the bear just running off and, and avoiding people. There's two situations where bears don't avoid people. One is aggressive defensive behavior and the other one is predatory behavior. So when we encounter a bear, we want to look at its head, its shoulders, and its posture. A lot of times in aggressive defensive encounters, bears show signs of stress by woofing at you or popping their teeth. A really serious stress indicator is a bluff charge. Those bluff charges, a lot of times, their head is high and they're not coming at full speed. 
and all those stress indicators are trying to tell you that you're too close to their food, space, or cubs. If you run across a very aggressive bear, the best thing to do is not get worked up. You try to run or get excited or make sharp moves or whatever, that could cause more aggression. If you run, then that kicks in their predatory instinct. In those situations is get your deterrent ready, stand your ground, and then when he gives you an opening, back off slowly, keep your eye on him. You certainly never want to turn your back on him. If a bear is exhibiting defensive behavior and makes contact before you can use a deterrent, drop and cover by lying flat on your stomach. Interlock your fingers and cover your neck. Protect your face and vital organs. Spread your legs shoulder width apart to prevent the bear from rolling you over. Do not yell or fight back. Once the bear feels the threat is neutralized, it will break off the attack. Make certain the bear has left the area before you move. Though extremely rare, predatory behavior occurs for a variety of reasons. One cause for predatory behavior is human food conditioning. As bears receive more human food rewards, they begin to lose their natural fear and respect of people. It's not very common, but those bears are much more bold and they don't show signs of stress. You might be aware of that bear for a long length of time. They're intent on killing you to, to eat you as a food source. Unlike defensive behavior, a predatory bear will not exhibit stress as it approaches you. Its posture will show more confidence and focused intensity. If you are unable to use your deterrent in time, then fight back. In a defensive attack, play dead and protect your neck and organs. In a predatory attack, fight back. A bear may approach because it's curious, habituated, or testing its dominance. It's important to assess the bear's behavior and in non-defensive encounters, act assertive. Bear spray is a tool in the toolbox. Firearms are a tool in the toolbox. Your brain is a tool in the toolbox to keep you from getting into those encounters and keeping yourself safe. As a guide, make sure your client understands all tools available to them and how to use them. Go over some practice with them on how to pull the bear spray. Also how to be proficient with their firearm and possibly the firearm that the guide is carrying. For most people that are recreating in the wild, bear spray is probably the easiest to learn how to use and be proficient at. When we investigate cases where people shoot bears in self-defense, I would say about 50% of the time, they still get injured before they're able to kill the bear or the bear leaves on its own. That's why bear spray is advantageous because it makes that big cloud and it, it shoots out 25 to 30 feet. Always keep your bear spray on you or within reach. Bear spray is useless if it's in your backpack or not quickly accessible. When deploying bear spray, pull it from the holster and remove the safety clip. Pressing the top trigger down, begin spraying low to the ground and build a wall upward in an X or Z pattern. You need to think that you're building a wall between you and the bear. You're doing an X pattern, spraying it and keeping it low to the ground because that's how those bears come in, is they're generally low to the ground. And if you can build that wall of spray so they hit that, that's the best way to deploy bear spray. As a guide, it's important to think about the skill level of your client when planning how to deter a bear in the field. Your life could be in their hands. I don't really recommend a pistol. If you think you're good enough to where you can hit a beach ball throwing at you when you're not expecting it, then the pistol's a good idea. But if a bear attacks you and he's coming fast, you gotta practice a lot and be very proficient with it. There are a lot of things you can do to minimize the seriousness of encounters, carcass management, good camp practices, safe hunting practices, but you need to go into that understanding that there is a possibility of a serious encounter and how best to prepare yourself to keep it from being very serious. Watch for bear sign or a carcass 
These are indicators that a bear may be nearby. Also, always hunt with a partner. Whether you're a guide hunting with a client or a pair of hunters, bears are deterred by groups. Hunt together and stay within sight of each other. During the fall hunting season, bears are preparing for up to six months of winter hibernation. They're in a stage of hyperphagia or extreme hunger. This motivates them to stock up on calories and hunt for nutrient-rich food sources, such as animal carcasses. These bears are looking for food. Hunters are providing food with the carcasses on the ground. When you have meat on the ground, there's the blood smell in the air. So the bears are really attracted to that and it just makes it for a volatile situation. After a hunter makes a successful kill, the guide will begin processing the animal in the field while the hunter stands watch for any bears approaching. As a guide, this is one of the most vulnerable scenarios you can be in because you are relying on your client who may have very little field experience to protect you against an impending bear encounter. Many of the recent bear-related fatalities and injuries have happened during this exact moment. It's critical that you and your client have practiced and have a plan in place. That little bit of preparation could save you or your client's life. As a guide, you're gonna be dependent upon your client to be your backup, to be watching for you when your eyes are down working on that elk. Guides need to practice and talk with their hunters about we're in bear country and this is what could happen and this is what we need to do. And do you know how to operate a pistol? Do you know how to operate bear spray? A hunter might shoot his rifle a hundred times. He's never pulled bear spray. It's a good thing to get that muscle memory to try and use it as much as we can. Bears have learned that a gunshot usually means food. And with a sense of smell seven times stronger than a bloodhound, even in archery season, it's likely they've already caught wind of the kill. That's why it's critical that everyone knows their role in ensuring each other's safety while processing game in the field. So when you kill an elk, you want to have a plan on what you're doing. Hey! When you're going in on these carcasses, you need to make a lot of noise. Let them know that you're there. Have your firearm or bear spray ready and accessible so if something does happen, you can get it out quickly and, and react. See that carcass down here in the trees? That's where a bear will probably come into. And one of you be over on this side where you have a clear view. The other one come around to this side over here and have a view. Keep making noise, have your bear spray ready, just to give us a heads up if the bear does come in on us quietly. You need to know the lay of your land, the way the wind's blowing. The bears are typically gonna come in from downwind where they can smell. As you are taking it apart, you're releasing more odor into the air, so the chances of a bear coming in increase. As a guide, you have a number of tools at your disposal to prevent a bear encounter. In addition to having your client keeping watch with firearm and bear spray ready, if you have horses with you, place them at different points around the kill. Horses are a great alarm and will identify a bear and alert much sooner than a human will. Horses also have a large presence and often discourage bears from approaching any closer. You know, if a bear comes in, they're going to perk up, they're going to snort, they're going to stomp, do something. So you can look for those signs to let you know. In addition to horses, if you can gather more people to the site, you can post them as additional lookouts. If a bear sees a group of people, they're more likely to keep a safe distance and wait for you to leave the area. After successfully packing the meat, it's important to get it off the mountain as soon as possible. When bringing meat back to camp, it must be hung on a meat pole to prevent bears from getting to it. When an elk comes back into camp to get hung at the meat pole, gather up a few more people. The more eyes out there, the better, and the more noise, the better.
When the meat is hung, it must be hung a minimum of 10 feet high and 4 feet away from any vertical. Bears will be attracted to it, so the meat pole must be posted a minimum of 100 yards from camp. Everything's done correctly, the bears aren't going to get anything there, but the smell of that blood and the meat brings those bears into camp. We don't want bears hanging around camps, so we really encourage outfitters and hunters to get those carcasses packed out back to the trailhead and off the forest as quickly as they can. Elk meat isn't the only camp attractant for bears. Human food and garbage, as well as livestock feed, will draw bears in, looking for an easy food reward. The bears have a tremendous sense of smell, so if you're leaving food out or garbage or trash or whatever laying around, they're going to be able to sense that, come in, and if they do get a reward, they'll start associating food with people. If a bear gets a food reward, they keep coming back. So when bears come into camp, we want people to make noise and, and run them out of camp and for it to not be a good experience for them. A clean camp is key. Guides and hunters need to manage the safe storage of food and animal feed. Using bear safe containers and elevated storage helps prevent bears from being attracted to camp and gaining food rewards. We don't keep any food or anything in our sleeping tents. We have food storage containers, they're certified bear proof. Our grain, our horse feed is all stored in a cache. It's hung up in a bear proof area where they can't get to. Our trash bags out here, every night before we go to bed, they are hung to make sure there's no attractants or any reward for a bear to get in this camp. When you take a client that has no experience in the backcountry, your role in that situation is to educate them, keep them safe, make sure they have a great experience and get them home. Hunting is a time-honored tradition in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem. Your preparation and committing to these best management practices will help you stay safe, have a great hunt, and preserve our wild lands and wildlife. When you come out here and you see a grizzly track in the snow, you understand that you're in some of the wildest country in the lower 48 states. You get out in that country and you really get a sense that you're part of something that is pretty hard to find anymore. Bears are part of what makes that wilderness wild. We have a responsibility to keep that wilderness wild and being bear safe and aware of what's going on around you is part of that.